Hello, my name is Robert Yanello and I'm the Senior Education Manager for the ARM University program. As you're all aware, the COVID-19 virus is having a profound impact across all aspects of society, including the provision of education. As a result of the pandemic, universities around the world are looking to move their teaching activities online and at pace in order to provide a continuity of education. In this presentation, I will provide you with an overview of ARM education and the teaching resources we've created for academics and students. In particular, I'll focus on our digital and online resources with the hope that these materials will support your efforts to manage this rapid transition to online learning. Firstly, I'd like to introduce ARM education to you. The vision of the ARM education team is to play a leading role in bridging the skills gap in engineering and computer science. We aim to do this by creating an environment where industry can contribute to the education of the next generation of engineers through the creation of up-to-date teaching materials. We also aim to create affordable and easy to understand content that removes barriers to teaching and learning in the subject. And finally, we wish to be able to attract new participants and increase diversity in engineering via these accessible teaching and learning materials. In order to help address the gap in computing and STEM education, ARM set up the education group with a lifelong learning approach in mind. To that end, ARM education is structured into two programs. The ARM University program is the oldest of the two and was set up in 2013. The ARM school program was established in early 2018 and its aim is to address the STEM ed education gap in pre-university education. ARM Education Media is our publishing imprint and provides us with a platform for the two programs to publish premium educational content. We also work closely with ARM's sustainability and partner enablement groups. Additionally, we're investigating certification opportunities with selected partners covering the key stages in the lifelong learning journey. In today's presentation, I'll focus on the activities of the ARM University program and the relevant publishing output from ARM Education Media. Our flagship offering to universities worldwide is the ARM University Program Education Kit series. Our education kits are self-contained educational materials offered exclusively and at no cost to academics and teaching staff. They're designed to support your day-to-day -day teaching on core electronic engineering and computer science subjects. The teaching materials are presented in a modular format and include lecture slides in PowerPoint with notes, lab manuals, demonstration code and projects with solutions, all available for use in a typical 10 to 12 week undergraduate course. You have the freedom to choose which modules to teach. You can use all the modules in the education kit or only those that are most appropriate to your teaching outcomes. The teaching materials are based on four guiding principles. One, academics must be able to access the materials online. This is especially relevant as many universities start transitioning to remote learning. We deliver the teaching materials via the cloud using our ARM Connector community portal. Two, where relevant, the materials will utilize games and multimedia elements to make learning fun and interactive. Three, we teach fundamental principles in computer and electronic engineering using ARM-based hardware as the demonstrator platform. And four, where possible, the hardware platforms we use must be accessible and affordable so that the cost of ownership for students should be less than the typical cost of a textbook, so around £50. It's worth highlighting that we also donate multiple licenses to the professional version of the ARM Development Studio so that your students can familiarise themselves with the software tools that they may use when entering the workforce. Come September when we release our VLSI Fundamentals Education Kit, we will have completed our initial roadmap of 12 education kits divided into three thematic streams. This is a major milestone for us and we welcome feedback from the academic community on which subject areas you think we should be producing future education kits on. As far as our existing education kits are concerned, 
We have an annual maintenance cycle and a four-year revamp beat to deal with hardware and software maintenance or obsolescence. I just wanted to highlight two education kits that are particularly relevant to this audience. We've just launched our Introduction to Computer Architecture Education Kit and this is a quick snapshot of the aim, labs and syllabus of this particular kit. This is our latest education kit on VLSI fundamentals. The aim of this course is to teach students how to physically implement a VLSI design using industry standard EDA tools. As mentioned, this education kit will be launching in September. I'd like to finish this section of my presentation by showing you this video from Cornell University, which explains how they've integrated our education kits into their curriculum. We created this new embedded course at Cornell, embedded systems course at Cornell about four years ago. And at that time, one of the things that was very important for us was to create a portable platform, essentially a lab in a box, that when the lecture was done and the handouts were handed out about the lab, people could just take them home and essentially have a lab at, right at home instead of having to set up a whole room for them. That was important because the class is very popular and has north of 160 students, so it was clearly impractical to just set up a whole lot of sessions for this. The ARM-based platform that we got was very useful because first, it allowed us to uh, teach uh, based on an architecture that the students were very likely to find out there. And the fact that, and the students know that, and so that, that was very attractive for the student. And second, because it was uh, Arduino pin compatible, when it came to the open-ended project, uh, it allowed students to expand greatly in terms of ideas of what to do, and so they would go to uh, online and buy a $10 part uh, and attach it to, to that and create a whole new dimension of uh, project ideas that wasn't possible before. Whenever you switch, uh, you make a significant switch like that in a course, one thing that can be a little bit overwhelming is how to put all the pieces together. You, you are not just switching to another type of hardware, you're switching to a different programming environment. Uh, you have to create material for uh, that new piece of hardware. And when I went to the ARM website, I realized that all of that was already ready to go there. Um, in fact, there we were able to uh, get access to three different programming environments and test them all out and decide which one to take. Uh, there were slides uh, prepared by ARM and those slides were very useful for our discussion section. So we, we would borrow material from that and then create our own set of slides for the lectures where we would discuss the generics of the architecture and the ISAs and how it ports to other uh, concepts of architecture, but when it came to the discussion sections in the afternoons, they would be very specific to the architecture and, you know, the ARM slides were there. We have a lot of interest in our course in the, for the students to be able to see exactly what's going on underneath. And so the Kyle environment, for example, was uh, very, use, very useful for a bare metal uh, type of development where the students actually have to code every little bit of it and the programmer, the programmer has to be concerned about putting the program together and, and it works you know, without significant uh, software infrastructure. I'd like to now spend some time talking about the online courses and textbooks published by our ARM Education Media imprint. Four years ago, we launched the first of our online courses. The aim was to enhance our lecture facing education kit materials with rich video content and interactive quizzes and make them available for students and the wider learner community. The end result is a series of online courses that provide learners with a flipped classroom experience where they can work through these materials at their own pace. All the courses are available on a cloud-based platform with 24-7 access and are suitable for remote or distance learning. In fact, they're ideal for academics looking to provide curriculum support for existing ARM-based courses, or perhaps looking to teach ARM technologies for the first time. An example of one of the lab exercises taken from our Internet of Things online course is running on screen at the moment. Each modular online course includes lecture slides, hands-on lab videos with solutions and interactive quizzes. The courses provide an understanding of ARM architecture and the principles of software and hardware system design. We have 10 online courses available at the moment and we're looking to expand our offering further by investigating opportunities to create new courses 
are massive open online course platforms or MOOCs. In fact, we're due to make an announcement soon about this, so watch this space. And just finally, to help universities move their teaching activities online, the ARM Education team are offering free institutional access to all our online courses for six months. You can email us at edumedia at arm.com to discuss further. Here's a video from Dr. Donald Ray from Harriet Watt University explaining how he's using a selection of our online courses in the curriculum of the School of Engineering and Physical Sciences. There's a growing trend for interactive multimedia self-paced learning in academia. That's why we're adopting the ARM Education Media DSP online course in our labs. With its modular and flexible structure, our students are able to assimilate important engineering concepts at their own pace and develop valuable industry relevant skills. We find this course very helpful. Um, we're able to learn at our own pace and we can learn it basically anywhere as long as we have uh, the chipboard and also an oscilloscope and the computer. We could go at our own pace as well as we could actually find out more information using the videos um, and also the extra information given by ARM. Moving on to our textbooks and reference books. Our book publishing program has been specifically designed to complement our education kits and online courses. Our textbooks are suitable for classroom adoption in electrical engineering, computer engineering and related areas. Our reference books are suitable for graduate students, researchers, aspiring and practicing engineers. We currently have three textbooks on embedded system design, digital signal processing and operating systems foundations with Linux. We've also published the very popular System on Chip Design Reference Book, written by our very own Joseph Yu, Distinguished Arm Engineer. Looking forward, we have four textbooks scheduled for publication in 2020 and 2021, with an emphasis on embedded systems and SOC design. It's worth noting that in September, we'll be publishing a new reference book on ARM's Helium technology, the M-Profile Vector Extension for the ARM Cortex-M processor series. This reference book will be available as a free download and we'll be announcing access details shortly. And finally, we would encourage you to visit our education hub on the ARM Connected community, where we've produced a series of case studies focusing on how universities from across the world are teaching core computer and electronic engineering subjects using our content. There are additional resources you can also access which provide insights and commentary on areas as diverse as homeschooling, research outputs and thoughts on how academics can make the transition to online teaching. I'd like to conclude today's presentation by showing you a video we've produced that illustrates how ARM technology is present in the daily routine of a typical student and explains why it's important that they learn the core engineering concepts that our educational materials cover. Hey, smart assistant, what's the weather tomorrow? Tomorrow's forecast will be highs of 25 degrees Celsius with lows of 10. Thanks. Set an alarm for 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Alarm set for 7.30 a.m. Ah, oh, road closed. I'm going to be late for class. Smart assistant, show me an alternative way to college. Sending details to your mobile phone. Thanks, smart assistant. Group 1, using your phones to control the drone, I want you to fly it to the other side of the room. Pick up the box and bring it back. Group 2, controlling the robot, I want you to beat the drone. Ready? Go. These graphics are awesome. For real-time multiplayer, yeah! Crazy how far mobile gaming has come. What a day. 
smart assistant, set an alarm for 7.30 a.m. Tomorrow is Saturday. You have no classes. What will I do without you? Did you know that ARM is at the heart of the technologies you've just seen? Through our publishing program, ARM Education Media, we enable learning through textbooks and rich multimedia online courses, allowing students, hobbyists and engineers to become work ready. Our education materials provide an understanding of fundamental engineering concept using ARM-based technologies as tools and demonstrators. To find out more, visit our website. We are ARM Education Media, unleashing potential. Thank you for your time and I'd be very happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you for a very informative presentation, Robert. And I would now like to open the live Q&A. So introducing Robert Ionello, uh, Senior Manager for the ARM University Programme, and Shojin Hang, who is the AUP Engineering Manager. So starting off um, with some questions, um, which um, just to remind everybody, please do um, submit questions um, via the Slido on the right hand side. So Robert, um, with universities, um, could you just remind us how you can request donations to the EdKit? Sure. Um, so I guess the easiest way to do that is to go to our website, which is arm.com forward slash education. Uh, and then you follow the links um, that basically say explore education kits. And then from there, you can browse uh, the 12 education kits that we do have. And within each of those kits, you'll be able to request a a donation so it's a fairly simple process uh, our operations team will get back to you quite quite quickly just confirming some details and then we'll be able to enable access to the educational materials um, and with the software it might take a little bit more time to do but again that 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 shouldn't be too much of a problem so it's a fairly simple process to actually request a donation from us um, can anyone gain access to this education material free of charge? So what we do say is that um, the educational materials are really designed for teaching staff. Um, so what we do when we uh, process the donation request is that we just make sure uh, that the request has come from someone who's teaching at university. Um, so we do restrict access um, to teaching staff. But within that framework, uh, if you're teaching a course and you'd like to use uh, our, our materials, then it's a very simple process to uh, request a donation and gain access. Could you um, give a little bit more information about, you've mentioned licenses, about the donation of licenses to the ARM Development Software Studio? Yeah, so this has been quite a popular service that we offer to universities worldwide. So what what we um, what we do is that we give uh, uh, teaching staff the opportunity to request floating licenses of the ARM Development Studio, which is our primary development tool. Um, these licenses uh, licenses are given free of charge. Again, as long as you're using the software for teaching purposes purposes only there's there's no cost uh, and we set up the licenses so that they'll, they'll um, run for a period of three years so you don't need to worry about coming back to us year after year to renew the licenses um, uh, we've done that on purpose because we know how difficult it is at times uh, especially to liaise with I IT departments at universities to set these up so it's a three-year duration again it's a very simple process you fill out a form uh, we just make sure uh, that you're teaching uh, and then based on that, we'll be able to fulfill the software licenses to you. And do ARM donate hardware? So currently we don't, um, but we're looking into this. Um, we used to donate hardware a while back. Um, that's we, We're no longer doing that, but we're trying to find alternatives uh, to help universities uh, acquire the hardware. Having said that, you know, we try to develop our teaching materials based on 
uh, easily accessible and fairly uh, cheap hardware boards. So we try to price, especially for our embedded systems co courses, uh, our development boards tend to cost somewhere between $20 uh, to $30. Uh, with some of the other courses, they might be more expensive, but we try to keep the cost of the hardware to around about the cost of a textbook. Thank you. Um, and just um, a final question uh, around the donation request is, do um, people or institutions have to submit uh, a new request for each time they would like to have an education kit? No. So currently the way the system is set up, so when you actually uh, go into the request form, uh, you'll have um, a list of all the education kits that we have uh, and um, you'll be able to just check the education kits that you would actually uh, like from us. We're also working to um, make a sample the sorry uh, we're also working to make sample te teaching materials available without having to log in or request a donation so if you just wanted to kind of get an idea of what the te teaching materials cover you you could download that and then when you go in to make the donation um, you'll uh, you'll have a greater idea in terms of what what you're re requesting so hopefully that functionality should be available within the next couple of weeks which would make the whole process much easier thank you um, we've got a couple of questions about online courses uh, so one of okay. them will is what will the cost of accessing an online course be in the future? And then the second one is, given the global pandemic, do you see MOOCs as an important part of the future of teaching? Uh, maybe if I can answer the second question first. So uh, absolutely, I think MOOCs are going to be part of the learning landscape um, moving forward um so uh we've already seen with covid that um online learning is 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 becoming more and more prevalent um i don't think online learning will replace physical face-to-face -face teaching um but i think it's going to become a supplement um to the way uh, courses are taught at at university so uh because of that trend that's why we've uh, launched our first course on edX um, uh, and we're hoping to kind of build on that because we do realize that there's a greater need for for um, the provision of online learning um, with regards to the existing courses and I think the cost so currently um, we're making them available free of charge for six months um, um, in in response to what's going on at the moment with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, they are commercially available, but we are working with u universities globally to make the cost affordable. So just just to give you a quick example, here in the in the UK, there's the National Consortium of Universities called JISC, and we've just um, signed an agreement with them to have a very low low cost pricing for all our online courses for every FE and HE college uh, in the UK. And we're looking to do the same uh, gl globally as well. Thank you. Um, apologies, my video has just stopped working, but I am um, trying to get it to work again. Um, this is maybe more of a question for Shojin. Uh, are the teaching materials tied to a specific hardware platform? Um, no. Um, so we support uh, multiple platforms um, for each education kit. So, yeah, simply I would say it is not tied to a specific uh, hardware. Uh, thank you. Um, and what offers are available for technology enthusiasts who are keen to try and learn more about uh, ARM technology? So I'm assuming that's that's a question for me. So yes, um, so we have more for you, yeah. yes. Uh, so we have a couple of options. So I mentioned the ed edX course. Uh, so with the ed 
edX courses they're free to 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 anyone who wants to uh sign up um so i mentioned the first course uh which is due to go live on the 15th of september which is our embedded systems essentials uh, and that uses uh an embed simulator to si simulate um uh the activities of um of creating an embedded system solution on hardware but we're looking to expand that further so um with the Ed edX courses i mentioned that they're free um there is a cost to uh have a verified certificate but there's no cost to actually take the course so that would be one option the second option is that uh, we also have currently um a range of online courses uh, on a separate platform which cover a whole range of subject areas. Uh, they're commercially available but uh, we've tried to price them uh, so that they're, they're um, e easily accessible to in individuals looking to find out more about ARM technologies. And then of course we have our textbooks and our reference books. Again with the textbooks we've We've tried to price them so that they're affordable, but with our reference books, they're free. So they're free to download. There is a cost if you want to purchase them in print, but you can go on our website and freely download our reference books. So we have um, a reference book on SOC design, and we've just launched our new reference book um, on uh, M M MVE. Uh, so those titles are freely available and accessible to anyone who really wants to find out more about those technologies. Um, it looks like maybe we've lost Liz. Uh, so maybe I might um, uh, take on uh, the uh, questions uh, while we get Liz back. Um, so there, there was a question about are the um, are the materials uh, only in in English uh, or on in other languages such as French, for example. So currently, the education kit materials are available in English and in simplified chinese um so they're the two major languages um that we have uh in terms of the ed education kits and we're looking at, at, at ways of trying to kind of translate the ed education kits across m multiple languages that's that's quite a challenge uh as you can imagine there are um, uh, lots of different languages that we would like to tra translate the materials in but it's a question of how we actually do that but it's some that's that's a question that we're grappling with um, but definitely as of the time being um, the materials are available in English and um, and Chinese um, just scrolling through uh, some of the other questions as well <clears throat> so can the donated kits be used for research in universities or are they strictly for teaching only i guess our recommendation would be that they would be for teaching only um the education kits are pitched either at year one um <clears throat> so for for example uh our Im embedded systems education kit uh that would be a first year un undergraduate or a second year undergraduate tool um, um then we uh have more sophisticated education kits uh, such as the dsp or intro to soc um so that um will obviously be towards the later stage of a of a a, a three or four four year degree they cover the, the foundations so I'm not sure how appropriate they would be for research but if you're a researcher that's just going into a particular area say IOT uh, or um, uh, or uh, SOC design they might they might be useful but they're really designed for teaching um, I'm not sure if we have Liz back yes we do right. apologies okay. everybody Great. for um, the slight technical problems uh, of a virtual conference which is um, great so um, thank you for carrying on uh, without me um, so a few more uh, questions before we uh, wrap up 
Um, is the ARM education program only available in English or are other materials such as French available too? Uh, sorry, Liz. So when you were away, I um, I answered okay. that particular question. Right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, what topics do you suggest for multi-track talks for beginners? Oh gosh, that's a that's a um, interesting question. Um, I guess in terms of uh, a progression. Um, so maybe let me use the example of our edX course. Uh, so we've started off with covering embedded systems essentials uh, using a simulator because that's a really easy introduction to the topic um, because for some people hardware could be um, uh, I guess intimidating to, 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 to use hardware. So we've started off um, with embedded systems essentials and just using a simulator. Part two of that course will, will then go on to to uh, hardware so there will be kind of a natural I guess progression of complexity and then in terms of our future roadmap you know I think um, the next level from there could be IoT because once you have the foundation of an embedded system then you can begin to work with sensors um, and cloud-based servers to create IoT solutions then moving on to DSP uh, and then perhaps SOC and then computer architecture and then finally VLSI design, uh, but that's that's a personal view. Uh, that's that doesn't come from any kind of uh, uh, um, uh, academic per, per perspective, but just given the experience we've had in the past uh, in liaising with universities, uh, that seems to be a natural progression to follow there. Thank you. Um, and we are almost out of time. So just uh, maybe one more question. Uh, if somebody wants to collaborate with us to deliver, to develop uh, new content, what should they do? I think the best thing to do would be to e e email us at edumedia at arm.com. So as you've kind of seen, we have a pipeline of content, both existing and new that we're very keen to kind of develop and maintain and update so we're always welcome uh, we always welcome uh, opportunities to collaborate with academics and teaching staff um, uh, and professionals as well actually in terms of creating our content so we'd love to hear from you um, so please email us at edumedia at arm.com uh, and we'd be happy to talk to you further about that thank you thank you very much both robert and shojin apologies for my technical um breakdown but um, great to have the Q&A with you. And thank you all for um, Yes, I'd just like to quickly thank everyone for their attention, both during my presentation and then for the Q&A session. Uh, and just to summarize, we're, we're here to kind of help. So please feel free to get in contact with us and we can continue the conversation.